Now that we've seen what open loop control looks like in the presence of a disturbance, we can check how we can control the DC motor speed in closed loop and how well we can reject a disturbance. So just as a reminder, the closed loop control function from TD of S to Y of S and from R of S to Y of S is described as this. So if you're having trouble coming up with this equation, go back and draw the, the block diagram uh, with a feedback loop that feeds back from the output Y back to R as the reference input. And you'll be able to put this together. So again, if we want y, approx y approximately equal to R, we can choose a gain K that will approximate this. In the open loop case, we chose K equal to 1 over G, but that's not doing... If we choose K equals to 1 over G in the closed loop case, we don't get Y approximately equal to R. So in order to see why we choose this y equal to r, this, uh, the reason that we have to pick this differently is because we want r of s to be approximately equal to i over y over s. So if we choose t d of s equal to 0, then y of s is just the r of s term. So a times 10 over tau, s, tau 1 s1 plus times tau 2 s1 plus a times 10. So A being the gain K, if we choose K equal to 10, this is going to give us about 100 over 101 times R of S when we have A equal to 10. So 100 divided by 101 is approximately equal to 1. So by choosing this, we're going to get the final output for Y of infinity to be approximately equal to whatever R of S happens to be. Okay. So now if we choose T D of S to be non-zero, that is, we choose minus 0 0.1 over S, and remember that this is our equation for Y of S, so this is the transfer function that gives us Y of S based on T D as an input and R of S as an input. So let's go ahead and use the final value theorem and add in the actual inputs that we're providing. So we end up with a few S cancellations. And after, again, we've chosen b equal to 50 and a equals to 10. A few more s calculations, or cancellations. We see that our final value is equal to 98.96. So in the open loop case, as you'll recall, we had a final value with the same disturbance equal to 95. So let's chart the difference between the open loop and closed loop cases. So the open loop case is row 1. The closed loop case is row 2, and in the first column we have a 0 disturbance, and in the second column we have minus 0 0.1 as our disturbance. So, for the open loop case with no disturbance, we choose a gain k equals to 1 over 10, and we get a steady state value equal to 100, so that's exactly what our input value is. In the closed loop case, we choose k equals to 10, not 1 over 10, but 10, and our steady state value is 99 radians per second. So we have a little bit of steady state error, but it's pretty close. So we can trade that off with the rejection of the disturbance now and see that the steady state case for a disturbance of minus 0 0.1 for open loop is 5%. So we have 5% steady state error. Whereas our steady state error is, what, 1.04%? Is that about right for, for in this case? So in... Uh, with zero disturbance, we have a 1% steady state error. And with uh, a small disturbance, we have 1.04% steady state error. So just a small amount of change in our steady state error for closed loop compared to open loop. In the open loop case, we go from zero to 5% steady state error. And so we're basically not able to reject this disturbance in the open loop case. So as you might have guessed, because we've basically said this all semester long, Feedback improves disturbance rejection. If you want to be able to get rid of disturbance, where disturbance might be somebody else messing with your inputs, it might be error that you see in your model, any way that you can reject disturbance is good, and feedback is one method that we can use for that.